So we are going to continue reading today from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 7. We, we just finished the Chapter 6 in which we read about the um, different progeny of the daughters of Daksh. Daksh had 60 daughters and then how all the so all the various species are coming from them how they populate the entire universe so now we are today we will begin with chapter 7 indra offense his spiritual master brihaspati as related in this chapter indra the king of heaven committed an offense at the feet of his spiritual master brihaspati brihaspati therefore left the demigods who then had no priest. However, at the request of the demigods, Vishwarup, the son of the Brahmana Tvashta, became their priest. So, we heard yesterday Vishwarup, one of the sons, one of the descendants. So anyway, his father's name is Tvashta. Once upon a time, Indra, the king of the demigods, was sitting with his wife, Shachi Devi, and being praised by various demigods like the Siddhas, Charanas, and Gandharvas. When Brahaspati, the spiritual master of the demigods, entered the assembly, Indra, being too absorbed in material opulence, forgot himself and did not respect Brahaspati who thus became aware of Indra's pride in his material opulence and immediately disappeared from the assembly to teach him a lesson. Indra became most repentant, understanding that because of his opulence, he had forgotten to respect his spiritual master. He left the palace to beg pardon from his spiritual master, but could not find Brihaspati anywhere. Because of his disrespectful behavior toward his spiritual master, Indra lost all his opulence and was conquered by the demons who defeated the demigods in a great fight and occupied Indra's throne. King Indra, along with the other demigods, later took shelter of Lord Brahma. Understanding the situation, Lord Brahma chastised the demigods for their offense to their spiritual master. Following Lord Brahma's orders, the demigods accepted Vishwaru, who was a Brahmana, and the son of Tvashta as their priest. Then they performed yagyas under the priesthood of Vishwaru and were able to conquer the demons. So we see that how Indra gets carried away. We are going to see in this chapter by his opulence. Of course, later he repents also. Shri Raju Vacha. Shri Raju Vacha. Akramam Guru. Shishyana. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishla Prabhupada. Maharaj Parikshit inquired from Sukadev Goswami, O great sage, why did the spiritual master of the demigods, Brihaspati, reject the demigods who were his own disciples? What offense did the demigods commit against their spiritual master? Please describe to me this incident. Shila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur comments, Saptame guruna tyakte, deve deitya parajite, vishva rupo guru tvena, vrito brahmo padeshataha. This seventh chapter describes how Brahaspati was offended by the demigods, how he left them and the demigods were defeated and how the demigods, following the instructions of Lord Brahma, accepted Vishwarup as the priest to perform their sacrifice. 
So Parikshit Maharaj is curious, what happened? You know, what did Indra do? Why did Braspati get upset? What's wrong? What like what what happened actually? Shri Badaraya Nir Uvacha. Indra Stribhu Vaneshwarya. Indra Stribhu Vaneshwarya. Madhu Langita Sap Satpata. Madhu Langita Satpata. Marudbir Vasubi Rudre. Madhur Vasubi Rudre. Aditya Rubir Nripa. Vishwadevascha Siddha-chāra-na-gandhar-vēr munir Nishev Yamano Magavan Asthana Yuktas chanye parmesh thies. Yuktas chanye parmesh thies. Chamara vyajana divihi. Chamara vyajana divihi. Virajamana paulamya. Virajamana paulamya. Sahardhasanaya brisham. Sahadhasanam Pratyutana sana di bihi. Pratyutana sana di bihi. Vachas pati muni varam. Vachas pati muni varam. Sura sura namaskritam. Sura sura namaskritam. Nocha chala sanad indra. No chitala sahasana. Pashyan a piece of hagatam. Pashyan a piece of hagatam. Okay, Sukadev so Goswami said, O king, once upon a time, the king of heaven, Indra, being extremely proud because of his great opulence of the three worlds, transgressed the law of Vedic etiquette. Seated on his throne, he was surrounded by the Maruts, Vasus, Rudras, Adityas, Ribhus, Vishwadevas, Sadhyas, Ashwini Kumaras, Siddhas, Charanas, and Gandharvas, and by great saintly persons. 
also surrounding him were the vidyadharas apsaras kinaras patagas birds and uragas snakes all of them were offering indra their respects and services and the apsaras and gandharvas were dancing and singing with very sweet musical instruments over indra's head was a white umbrella as effulgent as the full moon fanned by yak tail whisks and served with all the paraphernalia of a great king indra was sitting with his wife shachi devi who occupied half the throne when the great sage brahaspati appeared in that assembly brahaspati the best of the sages was the spiritual master of indra and the demigods and was respected by the demigods and demons alike nevertheless although indra saw his spiritual master before him he did not rise from his own seat or offer a seat to his spiritual master nor did indra offer him a respectful welcome indra did nothing to show him respect so here indra is being surrounded by all these great personalities of the universe you know so many and so much opulence and this uh, also singing and dancing going on and he's sitting in all opulence his wife is sitting with him and brahaspati comes but he's somehow not able to show any sign of respect to his spiritual master no 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 kind of welcome tato nirgatya sahasa विद्वान श्री मद विक्रियाम विद्वान Rasputin knew everything that would happen in the future seeing Indra's transgression of etiquette he completely understood that Indra was puffed up by his material opulence although able to curse Indra he did not do so instead he left the assembly and in silence returned to his home so what happened what did uh, what did brahaspati understand what happened to indra that indra is um like he insulted him and he was very much proud and involved in his um and he for what is shishtachar like he was not welcomed properly he wasn't he was not respected properly like how he should be brahaspati and he saw that what was happening in the future he also knew yeah indra showed no sign of respect and okay. brahaspati could understand that indra has become proud now so many people are respecting him like so many personalities of the universe are giving him so much respect so much worship so much honor so he's gotten like kind of carried away that he is mm-hmm. not able to even welcome his own spiritual master so then brahaspati although he could have cursed him he doesn't curse he just goes back home tarhi eva pratibuddhendro tarhi eva pratibuddhendro guru helanam atmana guru helanam atmana garhayam asa sadasi शिल्पा जी हरे कृष्णा आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू से वन थिंग दैट कैन यू प्लीज क्रॉल अप टू द श्लोका दैट इज रिटर्न इन इंग्लिश नाउ देर इज दिस डॉट इन द डॉट in the second line there is a dot under h hmm so that means that this is naha naha yeah 
no like a little because those two uh, dots are there yeah. that means yeah 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 that means okay. that two dots are there yeah okay yeah mm. hari krishna okay thank you atmana mm. ha yeah thank you okay okay thanks indra the king of heaven could immediately understand his mistake realizing he had disrespected his spiritual master he condemned himself in the presence of all the members of the assembly so we can see that indra although he is committed a mistake but he's realizing his mistake he's realizing that oh i didn't respect my spiritual master and he's telling that in front of everyone he's he's like making it public you know aho bata maya sadhu aho bata maya sadhu Kritam Vedabra Buddhina. Kritam Vedabra Buddhina. Yan Mai Eshwarya Matena. Yan Mai Eshwarya Matena. Guru Sadasika Kritaha. Guru Sadasika Kritaha. Alas, what a regrettable deed I have committed because of my lack of intelligence and my pride in my material opulences. I failed to show respect to my spiritual master when he entered this assembly. And thus, I have insulted him. So now we can see Indra is also surrounded by all these great personalities and he's also admitting his own mistake in front of everyone. So which is nice, you know, because sometimes we may commit an error but we may be still not willing to admit it but here he is regretting it publicly ko gridyet pandito lakshmim ko gridyet pandito lakshmim trip ishtapa paterapi trip ishtapa paterapi Yayaham asuram bhavam. Yayaham asuram bhavam. Nityodhya vibhudeshwaraha. Nityodhya vibhudeshwaraha. Although I am king of the demigods who are situated in a mode of goodness, I was proud of a little opulence and polluted by false ego. Under the circumstances, Who in this world would accept such riches at the risk of falling down? Alas, I condemn my wealth and opulence. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prayed to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim, kavitam va jagadisha kamaye. Oh my Lord, I do not aspire for material opulence or wealth. Nor do I want a great number of followers to accept me as their leader. Nor do I want a very beautiful wife to please me. So uh, Lord Chaitanya, Shla Prabhupada here in the purport is, is mentioning Sh uh, Lord Chaitanya's Shikshashtakam prayer, the fourth prayer, the fourth verse, na dhanam na janam na sundaram, that I don't want any material opulence, I don't want any wealth, I don't want followers, uh, I don't want a beautiful wife. Yeah, we may keep on saying, "Oh, I want more. I want more followers. I want more opulence. I want uh, more, more beautiful people around me." But Lord Chaitanya is telling us how the pure devotee prays. Mama Janmani Janmani Shwari Bhavatad Bhaktir Ahai Tuki Tuhi. I do not even want liberation. All I want, life after life, is to be a faithful servant of your Lordship. So Lord Chaitanya is saying the heart of the pure devotee. Pure devotee is not even seeking liberation. He is seeking to be with Krishna. He wants to render devotional service. That's the eternal position of every living entity. To be the servant of the servant of the servant. According to the laws of nature, when one is extremely opulent, one becomes degraded. and this is true both individually and collectively the demigods are situated in a mode of goodness but sometimes even one who is situated in such an exalted position asking indra 
the king of all the demigods falls down because of material opulence. So this is what opulence does to us. We forget, we get carried away. You know, we get carried away by the moment. Oh, I'm being glorified. So many people like me. So many people worship me. So many people adore me. So we get carried away by that. So here, that's what Indra is regretting. He's saying, oh, I got carried away. What's the use of getting all this? Better not have all this then. We are now actually seeing this in America. The entire American nation has tried to advance in material opulence without striving to produce ideal human beings. The result is that Americans are now regretting the wholesale criminality of American society and are wondering how America has become so lawless and unmanageable. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 5, Text 31, Nate Vidu Swartha Gatim Hi Vishnu. Persons who are unenlightened do not know the aim of life, which is to return home back to Godhead. Because there's so much advancement, there's so much material opulence, so much comfort, quality of life improves, but one forgets the main aim of life. So what's the main aim of life is to go back home, back to Godhead. One forgets to see that. Okay. So, like um, in this reference, I just remember my sister, she said she heard in a class she heard in a lecture where the speaker was saying in in form it like um just like in form of a of a kind of a joke that how we forget the main things that Sherlock Holmes and his assistant Watson they're going on a camping ground so they are they're there in the nice area very nice in the in the camp uh, in the camp area. And so Watson asked Sherlock Holmes, oh, what, you, what are you able to see? So Sherlock Holmes is like, oh, I can see the beautiful sky and I can see the, the, the stars and the planets and, you know, it's so beautiful and the breeze and, you know, so he's describing. And then Sherlock Holmes asked Watson, what do you see? He said, oh, well, I can see that our tent is being robbed by the robbers, you know. So just to show that sometimes we get so ca carried away by the unimportant that we forget what's the most important, the aim of life, to return home back to Godhead. We get so caught up in everything around us that we forget, oh, but what's my aim actually? Therefore, both individually and collectively, they try to enjoy so-called material comforts and they become addicted to wine and women. The men produced in such a society are less than fourth class. They are the unwanted population known as Varna Shankara. And as stated in Bhagavad Gita, an increase of Varna Shankara population creates a hellish society. This is the society in which Americans now find themselves. But it's, it's everywhere now. It's all over the world, it's the same, same situation mostly. Fortunately, however, the Hare Krishna movement has come to America and many fortunate young men are giving serious attention to this movement, which is creating ideal men of first-class character, men who completely refrain from meat-eating, illicit sex, intoxication, and gambling. It's true, Prabhupada. The, the young people, they just gave up everything. Or, or, they gave up everything and they were following Krishna consciousness. If the American people are serious about curbing the degraded criminal life of their nation, they must take to the Krishna consciousness movement and try to create the kind of human society advised in Bhagavad Gita. Chatur Varnya Maya Shrishta Guna Karma Vibhavasa. They must divide the society into first class men, second class men, third class men, and fourth class men. Means like the Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, following the Vamasha. Since they are now creating only men who are less than fourth class, how can they avoid the dangers of a criminal society? 
Long, long ago, Lord Indra regretted his disrespect to his spiritual master, Brihaspati. Similarly, it is advised that the American people regret their mistaken advancement in civilization. They should take advice from the spiritual master, the representative of Krishna. If they do so, they will be happy, and theirs will be an ideal nation to lead the entire world. So Prabhupada is saying to, to bring the focus back into what is actually important, uh, the aim of life, to go back home, back to Godhead. So the, they are, what they're telling here is that there are, um, uh, in the present time, the people are even lower than the Chattur. So that, that means that they're even lower than the Shudras. Right? Yeah, because we are not following any Vedic system anymore, right? We yeah. are not following. We, we don't have these divisions of Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. We are mm. not following the regular principles. So the society mm. itself, the entire society has become like that. Uh, okay. Not following but, the Vedas. But then we used to say that we all are born as Shudras. But now, we are, now it is written that we are even lower than that, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because not following the Vedic instructions. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Ya Parmeshtyam Dishanam. Ya Parmeshtyam Dishanam. Adhitishtan Nakanchana. Adhitishtan Nakanchana. Pratyur tish te My mouse was just a bit lost. Okay, if a person says one who is situated on the exalted throne of a king. If a person says, one who is situated on the exalted throne of a king should not stand up to show respect to another king or a brahmana, it is to be understood that he does not know the superior religious principles. So Sukadev Goswami is saying this to Parikshit Maharaj, that if one says that, means he does not know the etiquette. Shila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur says in this regard that when a president or king is sitting on his throne, he does not need to show respect to everyone who comes within his assembly, but he must show respect to superiors like his spiritual master, Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. There are many examples of how he should act. So Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is saying that, okay, if a king or a president is sitting, then he does not need to get up because he is the highest authority, right? So he does not need to get up. But when a, a, a devotee is coming, a Vaishnava is coming, or his guru is coming, or a Brahman is coming, then he has to get up and show that respect. Because after all, they are superior. There are many examples of how he should act when Lord Krishna was sitting on his throne and Narada fortunately entered his assembly. Even Lord Krishna immediately stood up with his officers and ministers to offer respectful obeisances to Narad. Narad knew that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Krishna knew that Narad was his devotee. But although Krishna is the Supreme Lord and Narad is the Lord's devotee, the Lord observed the religious etiquette since Narad was a brahmachari, a brahmana, and an exalted devotee, even Krishna, while acting as a king, offered his respectful obeisances unto Narad. Such is the conduct visible in the Vedic civilization. So Krishna himself, he also got up to show an example. He's God himself. He does not need to observe any kind of etiquette. There's no one higher than Krishna. But Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that he acts to, uh, to be an example because he said people follow the great people. So if Krishna, Krishna says that if I don't act properly, the people are going to get a bad influence. 
So he acts properly for to teach us. He himself got up when Narad Muni came. So uh, this is Vedic civilization, a civilization in which the people do not know how the representative of Narad and Krishna should be respected, how society should be formed, and how one should advance in Krishna consciousness, a society concerned only with manufacturing new cars and new skyscrapers every year, and then breaking them to pieces and making new ones, may be techn technologically advanced, but it is not a human civilization. A human civilization is advanced when its people follow the Chatur Varnia system, the system of four orders of life. There must be ideal first-class men to act as advisors, second-class men to act as administrators, third-class men to produce food and protect cows, and fourth-class men who obey the three higher classes of society. One who does not follow the standard system of society should be considered a fifth-class man. A society without Vedic laws and regulations will not be very helpful to humanity. So Prabhupada here is pointing out that the Vedic society was the actual human society because the, Ved uh, the etiquette was being followed everywhere. Now we don't even know what the etiquette is. So he's saying we should come back. We should, we should again have a Vedic system instead of focusing all the energy and, and technological advancement, we should also try to focus on to understand how to behave with each other. A society without Vedic laws and regulations will not be very helpful to humanity. As stated in this verse, dharmam tena param vidu. Such a society does not know the aim of life and the highest principle of religion. Questions, comments? I was just uh, remembering an incident in our life. Like previously, I remember that whenever our father used to come in the evening from office, then we just used to get up for hugging him or something like that, you know? Oh, wow, we were happy that he came. But like, you know, because it had nothing to do definitely with like, that I was thinking at that time that, oh, it's out of respect that I'm getting up. No, it was out of love that I was getting up for him, that I'm seeing you after the whole day because I went to school and you went for the work and now you're coming in the evening. So that was like kind of love that yeah. I got up for him, you know? Yeah, the loving exchange, yeah. Yeah, the loving exchange, yes. So I was just remembering and, like how how we were instilled mm. because when elders came we just used to get them and touch their feet and then maybe we sit down back so yeah. at least at that time we were nowadays it's getting little lost but still yeah true yeah. yes thank you Desham Kupata Desh Janam Desham Kupata Desh Janam Patatam Tamasihi Adaha Patatam Tamasihi Adaha Yeshadda the Yur Machaste Vai Yeshadda the Yur Machaste Vai Majanti Ashma Plava Eva Majanti Ashma Plava Eva Leaders who have fallen into ignorance and who mislead people by directing them to the path of destruction, as described in the previous verse, are, in effect, boarding a stone boat. And so, too, are those who blindly follow them. A stone boat would be unable to float and would sink in the water with its passengers. Similarly, those who mislead people go to hell 
and their followers go with them. So Sukadev Goswami is saying this to Maharaj Parikshit. As stated in the Vedic literature, Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 20, Text 17, Nirdeham Adhyam Sulabham Sudurlabham, Lavam Sukalpam Guru Karna Dharam. We, the conditioned souls, have fallen in the ocean of nations. But the human body fortunately provides us a good opportunity to cross the ocean because the human body is like a very good boat. When directed by a spiritual master acting as the captain, the boat can very easily cross the ocean. Furthermore, the boat is helped across by favorable winds, which are the instructions of Vedic knowledge. If one does not take advantage of all these facilities to cross the ocean of nations, he is certainly committing suicide. So this body, this human body is given to us. It's designed specifically for us to get out of this material world. That's why it's being called like a suitable boat. You know, like when we have to cross the ocean, we need a nice big boat, nice ship to, to cross the ocean. So this material world is the ocean and the body is like a boat. And the captain, that's the spiritual master. Under his instructions, if we act, uh, then we can easily cross the ocean. Then what are the favorable winds? That's the Vedic, the scriptures, the Vedic knowledge. So all the facilities are given to us that this body is suitable enough. We have suitable ears to hear about the glories of the Lord. We have suitable tongue to chant the holy name. You know, we have hands and legs by which we can engage in worship. We can go to the temple. We can uh, clean the temple. So we have a suitable body. And we are given facilities that we have scriptures like Bhagavad Gita. We have Srimad Bhagavatam. So many scriptures. The Puranas are there. And then we have the spiritual master. So, and then if we don't take this advantage, then the Vedas are saying we are committing suicide. One who boards a boat made of stone is doomed. To be elevated to the stage of perfection, humanity first must first give up false leaders who present boats of stone. So a stone boat is not going to float, you know. A, a, a boat which is made of stone is going to sink. So we have to make sure that what kind of a boat are we getting on. All of human society is in such a dangerous position that to be rescued, it must abide by the standard instructions of the Vedas. The cream of these instructions appear in the form of Bhagavad Gita. One should not take shelter of any other instructions for Bhagavad Gita gives direct instructions on how to fulfill the aim of life. Lord Sri Krishna therefore says, Sarva Dharman Parityagya, Mam Ekam Sharanam Raja, give up all other processes of religion and simply surrender to me. Even if one does not accept Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his instructions are so exalted and beneficial for humanity that if one follows his instructions, one will be saved. Otherwise, one will be cheated by unauthorized meditation and gymnastic methods of yoga. Thus, one will board a boat of stone which will sink and drown all its passengers. So here Sukadev Goswami is saying that those who mislead others, they are sitting in a stone boat. So sitting in a stone boat means, you know, drowning to the hellish regions. And then not only people who are sitting on this stone boat will drown, but their followers together will also drown. So that's why it's so important not to mislead anyone. Yeah, Sukadev Goswami is we are saying that. The leaders who are themselves in ignorance and who are misleading the people. So both. We are all both are sitting in a stone boat, uh, in a stone boat. So those who mislead people go to hell, and the followers go with them. So it's it's so important not to mislead anyone. 
In fact, we should give everyone the knowledge from Bhagavad Gita so that everyone can get out of this material world, surrender to Krishna. That's what Krishna's instructions are. Because this human life is so rare. It's, we are getting it after 8,400,000 species, then we are getting human birth. And if we waste this human birth, or if we mislead others to waste it, then that becomes, you know, it's a, it's, it's a very grave thing. That's the reason then it said that one goes to the hellish planets then. Thus one will board a boat of stone which will sink and drown all its passengers, unfortunately. Although the American people are extremely eager to get out of materialistic chaos, they are sometimes found to patronize the makers of stone boats. That will not help them. They must take the proper boat offered by Krishna in the form of the Krishna consciousness movement. Then they will be easily saved. So the, 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 the favorable winds are the Vedic instructions. And the Vedic instructions, the cream of the instructions, surrender to Krishna. That's giving Krishna has given us the Bhagavad Gita. He knows we won't be able to understand the entire Vedas. We don't have the life for it. We don't have the intellect. So he spoke this Bhagavad Gita for us. In this regard, Shla Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comments, Asham Shaya Plavo, Yesham Te Yatha, Vajantam Plavam Anum Majanti, Tateti Rajaniti Upadresh, Upadeshtreshu, Upadeshtreshu, Swasabhyeshu Kopa Vyanjitaha. If society is guided by political diplomacy, with one nation maneuvering against another, it will certainly sink like a stone wall. Political maneuvering and diplomacy will not save human society. People must take to Krishna consciousness to understand the aim of life, to understand God, and to fulfill the human mission. So, following Krishna's instructions on understanding aim of life, Engaging in hearing and chanting. That is what Krishna wants us to do. That's the aim of this human life. Questions, comments? Sorry, we are already a bit over time. Hare Krishna, Shilpaji. So this was said in the context of Indra Maharaj, right? Indra Dev. Like the offense that he has done for his guru. And then Sukhadev Goswami is explaining that. That what happens. Well, here Sukhadev Goswami is um, speaking that anyone who has misled themselves and is misleading others. So mm. any, anyone, not only pertaining to Lord Indra or... Mm. Not even specifically to him, because Indra, he yeah. realized his mistake. He realized mm. it. So it's not pertaining to him. But okay. here in this verse is specifically for anyone who's not able to understand the aim of human life. Mm. And is misleading others. Okay. Because Prabhupada quotes this example again and again, right? The boat and the wind, the favorable winds, and then the boat is we ourselves. Yes. Right? Yeah, he, yes. he calls one right again and again. This is. Yes. That's right. So that means this is really important. We need to understand this, right? Yes. That's right. That and then he mentions about Americans. Like he mentions about Americans many times. I'm just wondering the Americans when they read, how will they be? How will they feel? But yeah. now actually, honestly, everyone is like, I, I, mm. I wouldn't even, you know, now the whole world is like it's, that. Yeah, it's the whole world. And yeah. that time it was still different like 50 years ago, you know? Yeah. It was like in India still you could see some Mm -hmm. some kind of culture being followed but now everywhere mm -hmm. is the same no yes, yes. so Absolutely. it's for all of us you know basically you can't say it's only for one particular section or one particular country or anything mm -hmm. 
it it now pertains to all of us i would say you know yeah yeah it's true but yeah we are not able to understand how fortunate we are to get this human body that we have the facility we do have the facility you know we have suitable ears to hear about Krishna, suitable tongue to chant his name. We have the suitable intellect. The suitable intelli intelligence is also given to understand well, what the aim should be. But yet we don't use it to its full potential or we may misuse it. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, you know, when we started this chapter now, uh, seven and now when we have come to this text of 14 I feel like oh here we go <laughs> the drama started so I mean I'm like just seeing you know how before Daksh had his sons and then they were renounced again he had a son they were renounced and then they are talking about he decided to choose to have daughters now because they don't have to uh, go into that renunciation and they have to be devoted to their husbands and not endeavor separately but that was those times now we all are like you're saying on the same platform it's it's not that we have to wait for our husbands to you know endeavor for Krishna consciousness we can start and everyone could follow and we have to be in that in that in that mood of uh, you know chanting all the time so I'm seeing that, you know, it's so important that um, we we have to realize that the sons, they had a choice, the right choice. They took that choice and the daughters didn't have a choice then, you know. They had to wait for their husbands to, uh, they had to follow their husbands. But now we all have that choice. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, we all have that choice, you know. We don't have mm. to we don't have to wait for someone to help us to lead. We have to understand that now we all have to, we have to make that choice of just chanting and just keep going on that path and not knowingly ignore it. Don't wait mm -hmm. for, you know, our husbands or family member to instruct us. Stay in that mode, you know, of always chanting and reading and listening. Mm -hmm. So, Very Yeah. Yeah, so so I feel that when we started, that's why I felt like, oh, this is just like, you know, giving us that knowledge that, okay, look at those sons. They understood that they have to stay there. They have to, they have to continue with, you know, what Narad Muni told them. But now we don't have to wait for anyone. Now that we know what Narad Muni guided them, it also is for us. Even though we are females, even though we are all women, we have to understand this, that we all are on the same platform as our husbands are now. Our choices yeah. matter. Our choices matter. And then everyone will follow. Yes, yeah. thank you. So true. Because after all, we each are spirit souls. We may be in yes. the body of a, of a yes. woman or body of a man, but after yes. all, each of us are spirit souls. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Pichai Shlapa Upadhi, Jai Gaur Bhakta Vindu.